Return of Disc presents Night of the Living Disc. I am one of your hosts, Dan, of course, running the Return of Disc channel. Joining me on this journey is Robert. I'm so happy to be here. Well, welcome to Season 1, Episode 1. Decided to do Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. Okay, so yeah, Freddy 2, where Freddy 1 was all about uh, Nancy seeing Freddy in her dreams and her friends and all that. Uh, Freddy 2 seems to be just Jesse seeing Freddy in his dreams and bringing him into reality. So where he falls asleep, uh, so I think I saw he fell asleep in the shower, he fell, fell asleep in his best friend's room, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, falls asleep at home, and then Freddy comes out and can terrorize the real world. Jesse, interesting character. The original Scream Queen, as it's been identified, uh, famously he would come out after this movie. Unfortunately, he was ostracized a little bit because of that. But shown in this movie quite a bit that the dude's got some lungs. <laughs> Yeah. And he is, in fact, a screen queen, and I gotta say, you know, while it wasn't the greatest actor performance of all time or anything, he, he deserved a little better than what he got. I enjoyed the performance more the second time. First time, the movie was hard to get through, and it was still kind of hard to get through a little bit this time. There's not many kills the first 40 minutes, maybe. There, 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 there's really nothing going on. Just it, the it's more birds, a, right? Yeah, it's more of a teen drama. Yeah, sure. or, or can't go to sleep drama oh. type thing. It's you know, will he will he won't will he won't he like with the girl too and you know, discount Meryl Streep as you said, Lisa <laughs> a looks lot just of like sweaty, a young Meryl Streep. A lot of sweaty male teens. A lot of sweat a lot of sweat. A lot um, of them. Lot of, just a lot of white tidies. <laughs> <laughs> that that was a lot of dick. Like there was there was a, there was an entire shot that was just like framed 50% desk, 50% dick, okay? Like, just just dick in tidy whitey. And like just, I said, that was totally planned. They had the camera line up. They had somebody stand in with the whitey tidies be like, yes, the dick is in line with the desk. Mm -hmm. It was perfect. Let's yep. roll the cameras. Perfectly level. Yeah. I mean, that's totally what happened. Grady, one of my favorite characters of this, of this film. I Honestly, the best so part of it, like... He, he he goes full on bro mode, like start thinking, oh, this is gonna be the rival of the movie, that kind of thing. No, he's total no. bro by the end of it. They're friends. He didn't try to steal his girl and didn't try to get with Lisa at no, all. No, none of it. Yeah, like he it. was totally supportive and just yeah. like he was like he shows up in the middle of the night in his house and he's just like, All right, all right, all right just 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 go to sleep. I'll I'll watch it, no problem. Like, did he regret it? Probably, but you know, at least he was there for it. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, let's get into our first topic. How'd they do that, Dan? So I'm a filmmaker, and I kind of know what I'm doing. I sort of know the behind-the-scenes stuff. To the best of my knowledge, I'm going to try to answer your question about Nightmare on Elm Street 2, a particular scene, shot, whatever you want to think for filmmaking. Give you a little behind-the-scenes baseball. I'll try to answer the best of my knowledge. Again, I didn't work on the film, so I don't really know. Okay. But... I will try my best. Best estimate. Yeah. Okay. Best estimate. We, we appreciate that. Yeah. You know, some, yeah. some behind the curtain jerking, you know. Here we go. So the two things that came to my mind where there was a scene where uh, Freddy is coming into the real world and he does so by coming through Jesse's chest, right? So Jesse is like leaned up back against the wall. He's in pain. You've got the glove coming out already. Mm -hmm. And then he like slices open like the head poking through and then <laughs> steps out. So I guess, like, what kind of practical flicks do you think that would have to be to have, like, the body there and then the head coming through the back of it? So it looked like to me, and it's very quick how they do this, and it's, it's awesome how they, the editing, how it lines up. So the actor is there, and then we cut to the chest shot where he bursts out, and then if you notice, cut back, it's a clay or wax figure or some sort of like material they made of the actor. So it's not really, it's close to his face, but it's not really his face. And it's like closed eyes. Oh, and you're just moving? Yeah. And then there's probably some kind of puppeteering behind the wall. Okay. And then, you know, he could just walk through the chest. Ooh. Okay. Because you're already against the wall. 
So sort of like they have that, the set where the wall maybe has a hole in it. Um, so Robert England can walk through, through the uh, fake version of Jesse. Because if you look, it's very quick. But if you look when they cut back to the full shot, wide shot after the chest bursting, mm -hmm. you can tell it's a fake version of Jesse. It's not really the real actor, but it's very good. It's very well done. Um, that's why I really liked about this franchise: the practical effects. Um, that's all I can come up with. With, with is a no, that's fantastic. Like I, a, I like the idea. Like it's almost like uh, when a wrestler comes up through the bottom of the stage or something. Yeah. Except there's some kind of practical effect there in front of it, so it looks like. Nowadays, they'd probably do just have somebody wear a green piece on their like chest. CGI yeah, yeah, exactly. Gotcha. You gotta appreciate the old days, right? I I definitely do. <laughs> I think it's I think it holds up. Oh no, I think it yeah. really does. Uh, and then another great shot was um, uh, Jesse starts screaming because Freddie's trying to come out, and it goes into a shot through his mouth, and all you see is like Freddie's eye moving. Again, um, if you notice, you don't see the eyes; you just see like the face. Cut. So that's probably probably a fake uh, thing just around the camera. Could be. It could also be like again another uh, set design where they just a prop where they made like just the the facial uh, duplicate of the actor and then put like um, maybe a uh, you know a background that was red. I think I can't remember if it was actually Robert England or if it was like a. It, it was Freddy-ish for sure. It, it looked like Robert England, like it looked like the Freddy yeah. eye. Yeah, but it's two layers. You have the mouthpiece, and then you have the, the background where whatever where they had the actor or whatnot. They had Freddy in the background. That's how they did the shot, probably. That's wild. Put the camera in front of that. Yeah. So moving on to topic number two or, or category two, movie tree. This is where we try to connect the movie that we're talking about to other movies. Mm -hmm. Whether it be the cast, director, and whatnot, and um, unfortunately for this one, there wasn't a whole lot of like talent that would go on to bigger and better. Exactly. Um, we I mentioned what happened to uh, Patton Jesse uh, later on. Um, I mean, obviously Robert England's in this movie. He's the iconic Freddy Krueger. But this is also the movie where he starts showing up as other roles. He's uh, the school bus driver in the first part of this movie. Right. New director. Wes Craven's not in this, not in yeah, this I, one. I don't think he, I think he comes back for three. I'm not sure. I think he comes back as a writer on three, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Uh, and Robert Shea is still involved yeah. at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, Movie Tree will usually be a longer segment. We yeah, because so. especially with like uh, the ones coming up, Urban Legends and Wishmasters, we, right. we've got a little bit more to work with. Stitch. Ooh, yeah, this is this is a good one. This is we're, we're uh, this is our our biggest or best kill of the movie. Uh, which in movies like this, you kind of get a lot to work with. So, um, although we had two birds, I had two birds written down for at least thirty minutes there. Oh yeah, I was going to say, well, <laughs> it's your only option for the first forty-five yeah. minutes of the movie. Um, Other option I had was Jim Coach. Mm -hmm. That was interesting. Schneider, That's Schneider, um, Ron. Yep, Grady. That's the one that I chose. That's a fine choice. I think that's uh, a pivotal scene. Honestly, that it's between those two. Like another scene we're going to cover in a different segment uh, is is iconic. Is not even iconic, just a big part of the movie. But like as far as actual like Freddy kills here, like these are these are two good uh, the two best ones of the movie. Kind of a toss up. Are you doubling down? Are you going to double for both? You can. It's really a toss up for me, right? Like, obviously, the gym coach um, is an interesting kill. Like, you don't yeah. see a whole lot of stuff like that. Uh, obviously, the BDSM <laughs> overtones don't show up a whole lot in horror movies, but whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, but I would honestly say that Grady's goes down as the best acting in the movie. Yeah. Like, that is, like, true terror on that dude's face when he's seeing what's happening to his best friend and then going into Freddy just coming up to him and just, like, full-on, like, Vader choking him up against the door and just yeah. driving it through, like, best acting in a movie. 
<laughs> and I think this is where that Grady scene is where Freddy gets his full powers back, right? Yeah, because I think that's why like, the there's scene. enough terror involved at this point that he can like just kind of start doing what he wants. Because he gets fear from the parents, even can't mm-hmm. get the door open. I mean, obviously, yeah. And then they, you know, they're gonna see their son dead eventually, but they can probably guess that when they see the knives coming through the door and the the blood coming through it. And you know, even before that, Grady was like, "Oh, you're fine. You're you're going to sleep. You're nothing's wrong with you, Jesse." Hundred yep, percent. And he turns the lights off, and that's when you know everything goes everything to chaos. Everything goes to hell. Yeah. Hundred percent. So, so I, that's why I picked that one. Uh, so I guess we're in agreement on that one. Yeah. Cool. I mean, obviously, yeah. Honestly, there there's only. Two, yeah, there's not many. Um, I think those are the only two single Freddy kills in that movie. Uh, so you kind of have to go with those. Oh, hello, Zero. Thank you for <laughs> joining us. All right, let's move on to most memorable moment of the movie. Yeah, the... <clears throat> <laughs> Four M's most memorable movie movie moment. Most memorable movie moment. Most memorable moment of the movie. That's what I have written down. I just have. <laughs> mm. Times four. <laughs> so that'd be 12. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> gotcha. Uh, what are you going to go with? I am going with the opening. I think this is a great opening. Oh, the, the school, school bus. bus. And that whole sequence and bringing it back to the practical effects with the miniatures. And I thought it was just a really well promise of an excellent sequel. Now, for me, a lot of it's downhill for there yeah. for the next. 30 minutes and then it yep. picks back up thank god but i really think this is one of the better openings of the franchise that's why it's memorable for me I'll, I'll go with that um i'm recalling <laughs> i'm going over in my head some of the other openings like uh nightmare on elm street one pretty low-key so i'll give you that three is the scene with uh Kristen and that ends with her like getting her wrist cut. So yeah, I'm talking openings, not endings. So. No, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I said. Opening for three is Christian, like having the first dream of that. If you're coming into this yeah. with hype from the first one, I feel like it really delivers. And yeah, at least the first yeah. and the ending part do. The, the, yeah. The hour in the middle is kind of the problem. right. Yeah, the opening <laughs> delivers. Um, I have to go with uh the poolside rampage. Two reasons. Number one, uh, this is the only time we see Freddy like go multi kill on us. Like he's normally a one on one type right. of person. Sometimes he gets multiple people in a room, but rarely does he end up getting like getting several at one time. Which what he does here, and it actually like I think um, in that one scene doubled the kills of the first movie. Period. And I think account for a quarter of his total kills throughout the franchise. Because he gets, like, I count seven or eight. It's a great choice. I didn't even think about it being, like, the time that Freddy kills multiple people in one scene. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think both of those scenes are are worthy of the... mm, uh, (laughs) (laughs) And finally, we're down to our ranking. Which we're going to have a weird system. We're not doing stars. We're not doing one out of five, one out of ten. Screw all that. We're pro wrestling fans. Yeah. And there you go. <laughs> Rob and Dan. Yeah. Yeah. We are going with a rating. We're going it by uh, sis- uh, We're going by a wrestling system. The match card system. Exactly. So uh, just a quick explanation. I think we have uh, – We're it's one out of five, but it's if it's a, a one, it's the pre-show, which means that – you're not even on the main card or anything. If it's two, or calling it mid card, mm-hmm. just kind of filler. Mid main event is our like right dead center of the show, uh, three out of five type thing. Uh, no belt on the line, really. But yeah, it was, but, it but it's going to be a good match. It's going to be a great match. Uh, it's like if AJ had some S- moments. Yeah, it's be like if AJ Styles took on Chris Jericho. It's like mm-hmm. you're going to see something great, but it's not what you paid money to see. Right. Four is opener. Mm-hmm. It means you're trying to get off to a hot start. Uh, you do something good to make everybody happy for the rest of the – be able to want to sit for three hours and watch the whole pay-per-view. Uh, and then obviously five out of five, that's the your main, main event. event. I like that. Belts on the line. You paid You paid your $60 for this pay-per-view for this moment. This is your Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Like you were – this is 
you got to see it. It's going to stick in your memory for a long time. So that's a brief explanation of it. Now, what do we want to give this one? I'm giving it a pre-show, unfortunately. I just I can't quite bump it up to anything else. I mean, I... I'm, I'm right there with you. I, I have it written down pre-show, possibly just in catering, okay? Like this... <laughs> Like, honest to God, if you're going to watch the entire Nightmare on Elm Street series, if you just skip this one, it wouldn't hurt a whole lot. No, it probably wouldn't. Like, you're going to see one, and you're going to see, uh, which is easily your a great opener, like, main event type worthy movie. Uh, and yes, do they get weaker as you go on? Probably by everybody else's standards, but this one you could honestly skip and you would be fine. I agree, man. And because uh, the first one for me is the main event. Mm -hmm. And it goes down to pre-show now, so. So you go and, you go main event to pre-show, that's that's a pretty yeah, hard dip, so. It is. Uh, but in my opinion, uh, you know, three does make a good bounce back, so hopefully we'll get to cover that at some point. But I know there's so many of you guys out there that are big fans of Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. Mm -hmm. Let us know in the comments your thoughts. This has been uh, episode one of Mad Living Disc. Be sure to subscribe, like the comment, like the video. And if you like this video, please share it on social media. Yeah, yeah. And Rob, Robert, uh, thanks for doing this. We'll do it again uh, next week. Dan, Daniel, uh, I will, I'm looking forward to it. 